Thank you very much for coming. And uh, I will now introduce uh, the presentation of Mr. Jeffrey Griffith about his report, Beyond Transparency, New Standards for Legislative Information Systems. Please remember that the report is at your disposal on the European Center for Parliamentary uh, Research and Documentation website. And it is a 168-page document. Jeff worked uh, 30 years in the Congressional Research Service of the Library of Congress in the United States, where he was an associate director and chief legislative information officer. He is an expert in information technology and was instrumental in developing and implementing the legislative information system of the Congress of the United States. After retiring in 2005, he has completed a five-month research project through a Fulbright Fellowship, studying the legislative information systems of the European Union and several European countries. He is here today with his wife, Jane, who is the former assistant chief of the Science Policy Research Division of the Congressional Research Service. Please, Jeff. Thank you, Carlo. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for coming, especially on a Friday afternoon. I'm pleased to see you all. I apologize for the fact that my talk will be in English. I do not know Italian, I'm sorry to say. I did study Latin for four years, but I understand that's no longer spoken here. But my colleagues from Great Britain tell me that I do not speak English. I'm going to speak American this afternoon. I will be reporting to you on the research that I conducted while I was in Brussels at the European Parliament uh, this year as a Fulbright research scholar. In that research, I compared web-based legislative information systems of the United States Congress and the European Parliament using five criteria that I will be discussing with you today and would appreciate hearing your thoughts about. The topics, uh, these are the topics that I'll be covering uh, today. But first, if I may, let me just tell you a little bit more about my experience so you can understand why I take the particular perspective that I do. The Congressional Research Service, which is the agency or bureau for which I worked in the United States is the primary research arm of the US Congress. Its research and, research and analysts uh, conduct analysis of all legislation and all policy issues in all phases of the legislative process for the Congress. They serve all committees, uh, they serve all members, and they serve the leadership as well. The staff of the Congressional Research Service are by law required to be objective and nonpartisan. The service contains approximately 700 people. There are about 350 research analysts and the rest are divided among our librarians, our administrative staff, our managers and our IT, ICT staff. In my last years at CRS, I was the associate director and as Carla said, chief legislative information officer. One of my primary responsibilities was for Congress's legislative information system on the web. The Congress actually has two systems that it makes available. It has a system called Thomas, named after Thomas Jefferson which is available to the public. Its goal is to make legislative information available to the public 
as soon as the members themselves receive that information. It was actually uh, begun in 1995 when the newly elected Speaker of the House of Representatives, Newt Gingrich, decided that he wanted to, for the first time, make Congress's information available to U.S. citizens everywhere. For that matter, since it was the web, he was making it available to the world. It included in his vision that it would have all bills, the record of all the plenary sessions, all members' votes at a minimum. I must say that in 1995, that was a grand idea, but Mr. Gingrich unfortunately had little experience building such systems, and he did not understand how long it would take. He gave us three weeks to build a system that most people take several years to build. Because it was the speaker, we built the system in three weeks. <laughs> Let me say, uh, because I had a hand in it, that in the first year, it was not a very good system. <clears throat> we were doing things that, on the web that had never been done before. But we did get better. And in fact, uh, it became, if I may say, a large success with the American public in two or three years. In fact, it became so successful that the Congress itself decided that it wanted its own internal system for just itself. And both the House and the Senate agreed that they would have one single system that they shared. This was unprecedented. And in fact, we had by that time mastered the technology, so there were no technical miracles. This was a political miracle that we could get both chambers to agree to do this in a very short period of time. It was called the Legislative Information System. The abbreviation that we use is LIS. It had the same goals. It had most of the same information as the Thomas system available to the public, but it had a few items of information that are not available to the public, that Congress either purchases for itself or retains its own right to release. In 1997, when we released that version of the system, we were still among the first doing it, but we knew we were not the only people doing it. At that point, information systems were being developed in a number of other countries, and they were facing many of the same questions and problems. So with the support of the Fulbright Foundation and our Congress, I came to Europe this past year to learn about how some of these challenges are being addressed here. My goal was to learn about the, uh, European, about the systems in European Union and particularly in the European Parliament. I also wanted to identify some best practices or at least good practices that were taking place in Europe and in the United States that we could all learn from. I wanted to learn what we in the States and you in Europe were doing well and what we could learn from each other. I was very fortunate uh, in my work because the Fulbright requires that you have a sponsor and the European Center for Parliamentary Research and Documentation, which is a joint entity of the European Parliament and the Council of Europe agreed to sponsor, <clears throat> sponsor my research. Uh, Dr. Palanza is a member of the Executive Committee of the European Center for Parliamentary Research and Documentation. I'll be covering these topics that you see now, the background and purpose, the methodology, my findings, and a summary of best practices, and then some thoughts about where the research should go next. With regard to the background and purpose, uh, legislative bodies around the world are now using the web uh, to make their information available, as you know, both for themselves, it helps them with their own operations, for the public, and to achieve uh, the goal of transparency. This effort is part of a larger effort that we are sometimes described as e-government, in which citizens are frequently connecting 
to, through the web with their government for various uh, services. In the United States,